Well, my name is Belinda Langford. I was the main production assistant on the day. I was Phil Chilvers, the director's PA, permanent PA. I'd worked with him for quite a few years. And uh, we were told about it literally six weeks before the event. Um, so there were basically me and Phil Chilvers, um, Mike Appleton, the editor, and Nicola Hegarty, who's the secretary. That's what I remember. And then basically the four of us set the whole thing up, really. It was just four of us. And I um, basically went off and did a budget for the whole thing. I had to go off for two days. My head of department said to me, Belinda, you can go anywhere you like, but come back with a budget. Now, in those days, of course, there were no production managers in the department that we worked in. So that would normally be done by a production manager or a production executive, as they're known today. So, for instance, entertainment department, even at that time in 85, had loads more people than we had. So it was quite unusual for a production assistant to have to go off and do a budget. But I did. I came back with a budget. And obviously I did the running orders and the script. Obviously the new, I think the other girls are like Pippa Holloway, um, just seeing Jane McLean and Catherine West, they were the music PAs, but I was the one doing the, the bits in between with Phil in the truck. And as I think, as Catherine said, the truck was tiny. We were literally squeezed up. There was only four of us. I think it was me, Phil, the vision mixer and the technical manager at the other end of the scanner. It was literally the smallest scanner there was. And also the fact that BBC Sport always took priority. So they had the lovely big scanners to do their big sports events. And we had to be stuck with this tiny, tiny scanner. And then I had Jane Temple, who was another production assistant who sat behind me. And her job on the day was to watch the feed, which was a little tiny monitor in the corner of the scanner, which was the feed from Philadelphia. And so her job was to start a stopwatch and tell us when the American performer came on so that we knew when they started. And so then we could work out how long they had left on their set. And then we could obviously go over to there when we knew there was enough time to fill fill in on the show on the day so that's what I was doing I was sort of standing by all the various injects that we were taking counting out of VTs obviously going to all the ops there were several ops that we had to get to and I think as Charlie said and I don't remember this but Charlie said that she was there to take over for me when I wanted a break but I, I really really don't remember that all I know was that I was Phil's PA and I was sticking there for the whole time so I got there at eight o'clock in the morning and finished at four in the morning, I think it was. And uh, I remember when I got my taxi, I physically couldn't, or I, I mentally couldn't even say my name. My brain had just gone. But it was the most amazing, amazing day. It, it was the best day of my life, I think, of my career. And anything that I've done since has really not compared, really, it hasn't compared. Um, very a funny thing happened to me in the scanner. Um, I'm just looking up because I've got my PSC that I did actually. This is my programmer's completed form, which I did after the event. I don't know, you probably know what they are. They they have all the artists in there, all the music, all the VTs, it's all the information in a in a sort of like a running order form. And um I um was looking up when Paul Young was on because I was a big fan of Paul Young and he came on at about 16.40 in the afternoon and I just sat back in my seat and I started singing quietly along to wherever I lay my hat and suddenly apparently the technical manager at the other end of the truck was getting so many phone calls from so many European galleries that all they could hear was this woman singing wherever I lay my hat, not Paul Young. So that was really quite funny. And I was told to be quiet immediately. So I didn't do that again throughout the day. Um, but it, it was also, it was a very, very hot day. And we didn't want to drink too much because obviously we we didn't, we couldn't really leave the truck to go to the loo too, too often. And we had the air conditioning on and that was when the generator blew. I think David mentioned that the Who were on the stage and it all went black and that was because apparently we had this air conditioning going and it blew the generator so we couldn't have the air conditioning on anymore so we were sweltering in the heat of of that particular day um 
the other thing I did was I organised all the catering for hundreds of people. So it, it was a big ask for, for people to have to organise this in, in six weeks, but we did. But I remember working till midnight every night for six weeks, seven days a week, just to get it off the ground. And it was absolutely amazing. Uh, I, I, I can't really say any more about it. It's, it was just the best day of my life, really, of, of my working life. So I, as I said, I got in the taxi. I couldn't even say my name. I was so exhausted. And on the Monday morning, I was back in the office because I had to do the paperwork. But also, I don't know whether you were aware that there was a book written 13 days after the event, uh, which was this one, I think. Uh, let me show you. It was this one here. And the writer um, who was called uh, Philip something, let me just tell you who he was called. Peter Hillmore uh, rang me up on the Monday and I literally helped him with all the information he needed to write the book, to publish the book 13 days later. And it was lovely because he put my name in the book to say, thank you, Belinda. Uh, he actually said, thank you, Mike Appleton and Linda Langford, which is a shame he didn't get my full name right. But nevertheless, it was a, a great thing to have been involved in. So that's what I did for the next two weeks. I was talking to him and doing all that paperwork that, I told you was pages and pages and pages long, this thing. So, and that's all I've got from it. I don't have a badge. I don't have a script, nothing. That's all I've got to remember it by. No, I mean, the, the, the production team was so, so tiny. Whereas today, if this was done, I would imagine there'd be a hundred people at least working on it. It was an amazing feat. And, and even for me to go off and do a budget for such a huge thing, I mean, that, I was amazed I was able to do that even, you know. So, I mean, and when I went to entertainment, they sort of couldn't believe that I'd done the budget for such a big um, event. So, no, and of course, with all the health and safety that's come in in later years, it would have been a very... It, it, they just let us get on with it. That was it. We were just able to... We were had free reign and we were able to do it. And that, I don't think, would happen today quite as easily as it did back then.